A battery powered rocket engine. How is this possible? Welcome to Rapid Rev, and today we will explore batteries powering the Rutherford rocket engine. Please like and subscribe, and without further ado, let's get rolling. A quick background the Rutherford engine is made by Rocket Lab, a rocket company operating out of New Zealand. If you haven't heard of them, they are pioneering the small rocket and satellite industry. Their mission is to open access to space to improve life on Earth, and that's what they set out to do. So you might be asking yourself, what is the purpose of having a battery in a rocket engine? Rocket engines are such complex technology that you may not have known whether they even had a battery. Here's a picture of an RS-25 rocket engine used on the NASA Space Shuttle rocket boosters and for the upcoming space launch system. As you can see, there's a ton of tubing and piping. Rocket science is rocket science for a reason. Most people have no idea what is what when we look at a rocket engine. However, the Rutherford engine by Rocket Lab reduces the complexity of a rocket engine by utilizing an electric motor, inverter, and battery to pump fuel into the combustion chamber. Typically, a rocket engine uses a gas generator power cycle, uses a little of the propellants to start and power the propellant pumps through a very complex procedure we won't dive into. See Everyday Astronauts video for a better explanation and link will be in the description. The main takeaway is they add piping and turbines to power and drive the propellants pumps using propellant. Instead of this, the Rutherford engine is an electric pump-fed engine. This means the propellant pumps are driven by a brushless DC motor, which in turn feeds off battery power. There are two propellant pumps, one for liquid oxygen and one for RP1. So in summary, the battery powers the motor, the motor powers the pump, the pump powers combustion, lift off. So if it's that easy, why hasn't this been done before? I think there's a couple of key points to mention. Until recently, battery energy density wasn't high enough, and this matters because rockets must weigh as little as possible. The Electron by Rocket Lab is also an extremely short and relatively light rocket. It's shorter in feet than the SpaceX Falcon Heavy is in meters. These two phenomena coinciding paved the way for the possibility of creating an electric pump-fed rocket engine for the first time ever. With this road open, let's dive into some innovative aspects of the Rutherford rocket engine design. First of all, there's less turbo machinery and piping required, and this means less R&D was required overall, making it cheaper to design. This is important because Rocket Lab 3D printed an unprecedented amount of various engine parts, so the less parts they had to pr 3D print, the better. Secondly, the electric motor allows precise control of the flowing propellants. This gives the rocket engine unbeatable precision and performance, and it minimizes the amount of fuel required. And lastly, the electric motor is about 95% efficient. This means they convert about 95% of the electrical energy from the battery to mechanical power. So now that we've discussed a few of the innovations behind the Rutherford rocket engine design, let's talk about its pros and cons. Then you can make up your own mind about whether the design was revolutionary or absurd. Feel free to throw your thoughts into the comments. So one, complexity. Less turbo machinery and less piping means less parts exposed to extreme conditions, which means less R&D cost and time associated with developing this rocket engine. Additionally, Batteries and electric motors are a very well understood technology. Rocket Lab took advantage of this fact to speed up development. And they didn't have to swap one complex technology for another. Two, manufacturing. Again, there's less parts to manufacture, and also they 3D print all of the primary components of the rocket engine, including the injector pumps, main propellant valves, and the regeneratively cooled thrust chamber. Ultimately, Rocket Lab can produce an entire electron rocket in about one week. This is one of the fastest rates in the industry. It's likely comparable to SpaceX and probably way faster than most other companies. With 10 engines per rocket, that's more than one engine per day, blasting away all of the non-existent competition. Three, cost. You wanna maximize the amount of cargo you can get to orbit. While not much information is available on the battery itself, it's probably safe to assume it's a fairly common battery chemistry, making it relatively cheap. Additionally, battery prices also look likely to drop in the future due to electric vehicle and grid scale battery technologies. And another point on production rate, in 2018, Rocket Lab unveiled a new production facility designed for rapid mass production of the electron. The key word here is rapid. The faster you can produce rocket engines mean you can build and launch more rockets, which means you can put more satellites into orbit, 
which means you can capture a larger market share and ultimately make more money than your competitors, of which there are not a lot right now. Fourth and lastly, reusability. At the time of the production for this video, Rocket Lab has successfully recovered one first stage booster using a helicopter, and not much info has been released on the state of the booster. Ideally, all nine rocket engines could be refurbished, their batteries recharged, and flown again. With all that said, Rocket Lab is just getting started, and they are blazing ahead, with no competitors even eating their dust. Only time will tell how much electric rocket engines are used in the future. But right now, Rocket Lab is committed to using the battery-powered Rutherford engine for the foreseeable future. Their electric pump-fed rocket engine will open up space to more entrepreneurs and scientific projects than ever before. Who knows what amazing technology and inventions will be lifted up into space and change the world. Thank you for watching this Rapid Rev video, and if you still haven't subscribed, I won't force you to, but please do for more explanations of fascinating and mind-blowing technology.